the recent murder, prominent newspaper editor, La Santa Wikramatunga, was but the latest in a series of incidents. Tamils and Sinhalese suffer alike from these attacks on basic freedoms. Many Tamils have been abducted, abducted and have simply disappeared. It is sad to say, but it is almost a certainty that these attacks have been carried out by elements of the government. Impunity seems total. No one has been prosecuted for any of these incidents. No member of the security forces has been prosecuted for any abuses, reporting that it had, that it had encountered, quote, an atmosphere of confrontation, unquote, and, quote, an absence of will on the part of the government of Sri Lanka to investigate cases with vigor, where the conduct of its own forces has been called into question, end quote. I'd like to add one point to that written statement, which is that since my uh, participation in this hearing was posted, I've received about 40 to 50 emails an hour from various persons. Um, most of these seek to reduce a complex situation to simple slogans, such as, the Sri Lankan government is committing genocide against Tamils on one side, or the Sri Lankan government must wipe out the terrorist LTTE on the other side. Such simplistic slogans offer little promise to solve this difficult and important and complex issue. Thank you. Uh, three attacks in January targeting the mainstream media drew the world's attention to the problem, but top journalists have been killed, attacked, threatened and harassed since the government began to pursue its uh, all-out military victory against the LTTE. Many local and foreign journalists and members of the diplomatic community firmly believe the government is complicit in these attacks. According to CPJ's records, during President Rajapaksa's time in high office as prime minister and as president, eight journalists have died of what CPJ considers to be premeditated murder. No one of these has been investigated, and no one of these trials has been investigated, no one of these cases has been investigated, and no one has been brought to trial. Uh, La Santa Wick Ramatunga, as you mentioned, the editor-in-chief of the independent uh, newspaper, The Sunday Leader, was killed while he was driving to work. He was attacked by eight men who were riding four motorcycles. The attack came about 200 yards from a large Sri Lanka Air Force base, and after the attack, the hooded men rode off in the direction of the base, according to witnesses at the scene. The was that somehow Sri Lanka is moving in the direction of Zimbabwe or, or Myanmar. In Just over a week ago, I returned from Sri Lanka. I would like to begin this testimony by sharing with you an account of one of the witnesses that we interviewed there. One mortar shell came in, close. I heard the whirling sound. It was dark, so we didn't know where it landed. When I stuck my head out of the bunker, I saw the mangled body of a young woman by the entrance. I had never seen that before. I couldn't believe that it was a person. Nothing had been touched when we got out of the bunker in the morning. There were lots of people in bits and pieces lying around. My gut reaction was that I don't want to see this, but I felt that I had to. One woman was lying on her back with two infants, one of whom survived, as I later heard. One baby was hanging from a nearby tree. Another baby, decapitated, was hanging on the barbed wire surrounding the playground. Next to the woman lay her husband, face down. Next to the family lay other people. One was severed in half. I think the other one was as well, but I couldn't look anymore. The figures we have suggest that uh, the number of civilian casualties in the northern Vani region has now reached 7,000 people, including up to 2,000 deaths. And as outrageous as these numbers are, they might be just the beginning. As uh, according to UN estimates, uh, there are over 200,000 people now trapped in the Northern Vani region between the two warring parties. Many of civilian deaths, including the ones described in the testimony, the witness account that I shared with you at the very beginning, occurred in this so-called safe zone declared by the government. We received several detailed accounts from people who stayed within the safe zone. Uh, and this account suggests that the shelling by Sri Lankan forces killed dozens if not hundreds of people inside there. Uh, some of the attacks were particularly deadly because the government used multi-barrel rocket launchers, weapons that are indiscriminate when used in populated areas because they cannot be targeted with sufficient precision. Particularly outrageous were numerous attacks on the hospitals. Our report documents about two dozen 
of such attacks, hospitals attacked by artillery, shell, artillery shelling and aerial bombardment. Uh, one of the concerns is uh, the screening procedures. Uh, at this point, no international agency has access to the screening points, and there are growing reports of people who have gone missing after being detained at these checkpoints. Uh, this is particularly worrisome given Sri Lanka's sad record on enforced disappearances and summary executions. Placed persons without exceptions are being, con exception are being confined to de facto internment camps that the government calls welfare centers. Uh, I have to say that one look at these camps makes it very clear that the welfare of the inhabitants is the last of the authorities' concerns. They are surrounded by barbed wire and uh, machine gun nests and sandbags. And the civilians inside do not enjoy any freedom of movement, they're not, they're not allowed out, and their relatives do not have access to them. There are heartbreaking scenes happening outside of the camps as relatives are trying to approach their family members inside the camps. What should not be supported is the long-term internment plans by the government. Uh, as you said, the government uh, promised to resettle 80% uh, of, the, of the displaced by the end of the year, but if you look into what's been going on with the displaced in Sri Lankan history since the 90s, uh, this is not likely to happen. The hospital was run by the military. There were uniformed men, uniformed servicemen in all of the hospital wards, uh, corridors, and the hospital yard. Their main job was to make sure that nobody has uh, access to the patients from outside and that the patients have, have nobody to tell their story to. Most of the patients there were in a state of despair, often crying incessantly, and they were saying that they were simply unfortunate to have survived. As one of the patients told me, they promised they would allow us to go back after we get treatment. Now our families are back there in Vani and we have no information about them. And we are not much better off. People are dying in the hospital as well. There are no relatives to help us, and there won't be anybody once we go to camps. Why did they bring us here? We could have just as well died there because there is nobody here to take care of us, to feed us, and we are likely to die anyway, just through more suffering. I would like to conclude by saying that collecting information about the conflict in Sri Lanka was extremely difficult because Sri Lankan government has conducted a cynical campaign to prevent all independent public coverage of the conflict, bearing human rights organizations and journalists from the conflict areas in a clear effort to cover its abuses.